let's listen to verse number 11. هَذَا هُدَى وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مِنْ رِجَزٍ أَلِيمٌ This is guidance, and those who reject the verses of their Lord. For them there is a painful punishment of the divine scourge. الله الذي سخر لكم البحر لتجري الفلك فيه بأمره ولتبتغوا ولتبتغوا من فضله ولعلكم تشكرون. Allah is the one who has subjugated for you the sea, so that the ships may sail in it with his command, and so that you may seek his grace, and so that you offer gratitude. وسخر لكم um, in verse number 12, this uh, this um, verse was very interesting to understand. Um, as we know that the world have advanced and uh, a lot of uh, business and trade is going on. And this verse kind of intrigued me. Uh, in old days, people used to have a sailing boats, but today the most uh, biggest source of transportation of the goods from one nation to other or economic uh, prosperity is the sea routes. And Allah says in this ayah, guidance for those, uh, this is the guidance. And those who denied from the signs of their Lord, for them there is a painful punishment and divine scourge. Uh, Rids in alim, a painful uh, divine punishment will be waiting for them. And Allah is the one who, come, who subjugated uh, oceans, uh, uh, in which the sailing this uh, fulk is the sailing boat but nowadays we don't even have the sailing boat for the transport now they are using the mechanical boat and in that sailing boat his command is for seeking his grace so mankind seek the grace of Allah by seeking the sustenance and the world biggest source of transportation is the oceanic source of transportation and once as we know that the sea pirates in one time was much popular now there is international laws and rules to protect people and we recently heard about the what the in the Mogadishu and whatever uh, Somalian sea pirates and before there used to be a pirates who would invade uh, ships and before recent uh, days which is when the Muslims were dominant actually Morocco was the first country in the world who had the laws about the sea piracy and uh, would help the other nation and sign the treaty with the United States States and first country were recognized United States at that time uh, Muslims were very dominant in the ocean and the world and they used to do the trades and we know that uh, Muslims were so far off and uh, into exploring the world and the Navy and all that actually um, Christopher Columbus when he had those three ships seized their captain was Muslim and because uh, Isabella and Ferdinand they did not have the knowledge and so as the Christopher Columbus and he wanted to find gold to go to India and to get gold to fight against Muslim. So those ships were owned by Muslim. The captains were Muslim in the prison and they were released and those people were brought and first they sail in the Southern, South America coast and that's where the whole history is about. Just to know that the Muslims were at one time dominated the ocean and they were the source of trading and business. And actually Indian um, uh, kings uh, among the Mughals, they used to send their sailing ships to trade with the United States and other countries. So there was a time. So that was used for uh, business trade and it is still used for the business and trading. Uh, it's interesting knowledge to learn about. Next, uh, listen to the verse 13. وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مِنْ he has subjugated for you whatever there is in the heavens and whatever there is in the earth, all on his own. Surely in this there are signs for a people who reflect. And this verse number 13 is, 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 a, is a promise of God and, and the reminder for us as a human and as a Muslim that Allah says that we have made whatever is between seven skies and earth is all together is for you, is subjugated to you. And God says, as Islam teaches us, that God created everything for mankind and created mankind to worship him. 
And if we worship God, all the things which Allah has made, they are already subjugated, but they will be submitting also. In other words, what I'm trying to say here is that all believer, non-believer have used to explore the world and make use of it. An animal could be trained and taught, but when is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's believers and the Muslims, when in, in certain situation, there was a companion of a Muslim who were, um, who were sent for war in an in a area which was a jungle. And uh, they were kind of a beastly animal who would attack. And it was very noisy in that. So uh, the, the general of the Muslim army was told that this is not a safe place to camp. And he said, we are not here for self-glory. We are here for God's cause. We are here for Allah's purpose. So he told his army to camp in the jungle because it was safer from attack and invasion from the other army. And he turned his face towards the jungle where there was a noise coming as the sunset started. He said loudly, O oh, you creatures of God, we are Muslim, follower of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. And we are here for the cause of Allah. We want you to be quiet, don't create noise and help us. And actually, according to this uh, uh, narration, um, the jungle become quiet. None of the creature made noise. This is something subject of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command to the mankind. And we know that people have subjugated. And today when we know the whales could be trained, dolphins could be trained, the oceanic creatures could be trained to help the mankind. And there are other creatures who are beastly and, and lion and all those animals could be trained and elephant could be trained. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjugated all the biggest of the animal and the stars and the, and the earth for our service. And he created us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that is the message of Islam that none is worthy of worship except Allah. And Muhammad وسلم, is the last and final messenger of Allah. Let's listen to the verse number 14. <laughs> Tell those who believe that they should forgive those who do not believe in Allah's days, so that he may recompense the people for what they used to earn. Whoever acts righteously, it is for his own benefit, and who does evil, it is against his own soul. Then towards your Lord, you will be returned. So in this verse number 14, Allah saying that, O Messenger, tell those who believe that forgive those who do not believe because they were being the persecutor and Muslims are being persecuted. So forgive them. Allah is telling us in this verse, you can forgive the one who did transgression upon you, even though the Muslim have a right to take it revenge, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. But if you forgive, Allah says, for the love of Allah, if you forgive, let go of people who does wrong to you. On the day of judgment, they will be given the reward in return for that. And Allah will get, Allah, the day of Allah means the day of judgment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give return to those nations what have they earned. In other words, the disbeliever will get their earning of the disbelieving and the believers will get the reward of their belief and the good deeds and the forgiveness is a part of faith. And Allah says, whoever did righteous deed, it is for his or her own benefit. And woman as woman asa and then who did evil. It is for his against his own soul. In other words, when we do wrong, we will be punished. Our soul will be punished. And the day of judgment and there will be eternal existence in the hell fire. And the paradise will be eternal existence in the mercy and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Summa ila rabbikum turja'un. And then that day the, when people will be all brought back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we have mentioned before, uh, paradise, the believers will be given the height and uh, and the youth, height of Adam alayhi salam, youth of Jesus and Isa alayhi salam, and the heart of Ayub alayhi salam, and all these body parts will be made healthy, is strong, eternal, existing, where they will be given reward and, and the thing which is uh, uh, unimaginable. And the bodies and uh, of the disbelievers will be blown up to the size of 
almost like mountain size and they will be feeling the pain and suffering from the punishment in the hell so there will be two type of body existence and the last person who will be brought out of the hellfire for the paradise after they fulfill or allow more forgiveness or prophets uh, intercedence they will be given a dip in a in a bath or in a pool in a pond and they will come out their body will be rejuvenated to the person of paradise and they will be entered into the paradise and it is said that in a hadith the last person who will be brought from the hell to the heaven his paradise will be 10 times the size of planet earth and it will be his personal property and that will be everything whatever he or she desire will be there given for them and they will be living there forever they will be looking for their parents for their children for their loved ones for their friends and those friends will be brought to them by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, let's listen to the verse number 16. The conversation is turning now towards the children of Israel. And what Allah blessed them, what Allah gave them. And it is mentioning of the favor Allah did to them. And it is an example for us to learn from this message. <laughs> الكتاب والحكم والنبوة ورزقناهم من الطيبات ورزقناهم من الطيبات وفضلناهم على العالمين. We gave the children of Israel a book and the wisdom and the prophethood and provided them with good things and preferred them above all people of. The world. And we gave them clear proofs of the matter. For example, the religion. So they did not fall into disagreement out of mutual jealousy, but after the knowledge had come to them, surely your Lord will judge between them on the day of judgment in the matters in which they used to differ. <laughs> Then we have put you on a certain way of the matter, for example, the religion. So follow it, and do not follow the desires of those who do not know. <laughs> they will never help you again, Stella. In the least, the wrongdoers are friends to one another, and Allah is the friend of the God-fearing. <laughs> These are insights for the people, and guidance and mercy for a people who believe. <laughs> So verse number 16 is talking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding that indeed we bless the children of Israel, we give them book, the wisdom, the prophethood, and then we give them sustenance, a pure, clean, and we give them a increment, fadalna. Fadl, fadl means increment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give them preference over everybody in the world. And then we give you, وَأَتَيْنَاهُمْ بَيِّنَاتِ And we gave them a clear sign, min al-amr, from the command and matters and decree of religion. فَمَا اخْتَلَفُوا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْعِلْمِ And they did not differ and form a disagreement out of just mutual jealousy or this baghiyam bainhum. Baghiyya means the jealousy or enviousness or a, a rebellion among themselves. Bagha means a rebellion, enviousness. So proper word will be they differed not until unless they had rebellions I mean, among each other. Inna rabbaka yuqda bainhum. Indeed, your Lord will settle the matter of judgment. Qada means judgment. Bainhum among them. Yom al qiyamati and the day of judgment. Fima kanu fi what matter they used to differ with each other in this matter now this is about when before prophet muhammad was admitted he when he arrived everybody has to leave their religion even the prophets who are alive should leave their religion and they will follow
follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then Allah says, "Summa jalnaka," and then we made you, put you jalnaka ala shariatin. We created and made you and to follow the Sharia, the path. Sharia means the road. Shara means the path. Ala shariatin min al amr from the command and decree of Allah. Fattabaha that to be obeyed and followed. Wattabaha wa la tabaha. Fattabaha it means follow the decree and commands of Allah. Do not follow your own whims and wills. Alladina la yalemun and those who are the one who have no knowledge. In other words, the Quraysh, the Meccans, these are the people who thought that their forefathers were descendant of Ibrahim and Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah is saying that they have lost the path. They do not have anything to tell you to follow with them. They even distorted the faith which Ibrahim and Ishmael brought to them. إِنَّهُمْ لَنْ يَغْنُوا عَنْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيَّةً They will never, لَنْ never, يَغْنُوا benefit you or return or give you any any help. مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيَّةً Against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with any little and tiniest thing. وَنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْدُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْدُ And indeed the transgressor are friends and helper and supporter and protector and guardian of each other. وَاللَّهُ وَلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And against them indeed Allah is the... Complete helper, supporter, provider, guardian, caretaker, sustainer, maker, creator is for those people who have taqwa, who are God-fearing, who are conscious of Allah, who in their life and matters and deeds they are always worried about and watching and make sure that Allah's pleasure in their in their deeds and Allah's mm -hmm. displeasure to be avoided in their actions and deeds. Haza basair nas, and this is the insight. Basair basar means eyesight. Basar eyesight. You know, when we say farsightedness or the person's uh, wisdom and who can see things, basairul in nasi wa huda. This is the is the vision or the farsightedness or insight into the issue for the mankind and guidance and mercy for people, for the nation who believe. So this is not a promise for any race, heritage or ethnicity or racial background. Anybody who takes the guidance and has the insight into Islam will get it. As I mentioned, by the way, I mean, keep repeating on myself that the Indian scholar or who is a Sharia scholar and then the Egyptian uh, Coptic Christian who is a another person, uh, these people are uh, having all the knowledge and somehow Allah has not opened their heart. I wish, I think the reality here is if they want to be Muslim, they have all the knowledge. Now, if they don't want to believe in it, that is their issue and decision they have decided to live with. Uh,